Hey, you want to win a free bottle of really, really effective Ned hemp oil? This is the strong bottle, 1,500 milligrams, expensive stuff, very, very valuable, works very well for pain, relaxation, makes you feel good. You want to win this? Here's what you got to do. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we post this video. Make it a good comment. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and let you know that you won that bottle of hemp oil. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. One more thing before we start the podcast. We are running a promotion. Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle are all 50% off. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code June Prime with no space for the discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. Justin, what did you think of that uh, Loch Ness Monster picture? Did you see this? <laughs> no. Dude, that's so fake. No, really? Yeah, man. It, it, it looked no real. Good. It No, because it looks like, like what was it, a trout or a catfish or something? That, Huge, though. Yeah, but like it looks like they superimposed it on some something that's like a, a remote control boat or something. That, that's what it looks like to me. It looks like it got know. doctored and photoshopped uh, what, okay. and it's a distraction. What are you to subscribe to that you both <laughs> catch articles like this to bring to the I show? I want to believe though, Sal, so this monster this is, is a main, fun one. This, it's not that mainstream. It didn't come in my feed, okay? So I'm reading too every night. So what? Yeah. It, what are, unless where, it's making a touchdown or a goal yeah. or whatever. <laughs> you got to look for it, Adam. Okay. The, the Loch Ness Monster scores a touchdown. Hey, I saw that yeah. actually. I'll send it to, I'm going to send it to Doug so he can pull it up. Do you know what the Loch Ness Monster is? Huh? Do you know what it is? What do you mean, do I know what it the is? The Loch Ness Monster. I mean, I know it's that thing that giant, it looks like a giant dinosaur that's in underwater that people have seen and claim to have seen. Yeah. In, in Plesiosaurus. Plesiosaurus, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, a, what an unfortunate name, by the way. Right. Yeah. Hey, you know why they call Some, me the yeah. Plesiosaurus? Hey. But what were you about to just like school me on about it? Like Nothing. That? I was just going to tell you that. I don't you know, that. I don't know oh, if you knew what it was. Oh, of course. I mean, yeah. everybody's heard of it, right? But I don't, I did not ever go to a time where no, I'm like, there's a picture. Doug's going to pull it up right now. Look at this picture. There's been hoaxes before, too. Too, where yeah, like yeah. somebody has used a little submarine thing and and they've messed with people. Haven't with they done the same thing with Bigfoot? Isn't that the like the people do that with Bigfoot too? Just uh -huh. mess with people. don't don't mess with Bigfoot. Yeah. Okay, okay, he's real. I don't know if you can expand that picture, Doug, but uh, it, it looks crazy, dude. It looks like there's a freaking thing in the water. Yeah, but like also the perspective. I, yeah, I I'm right. not really getting the the enormity of the size from this I picture know. either. You got it, dude. You got it. Could just me. be. It could just be a fish. Did you ever follow Justin? Did you ever follow those expeditions where people would me? go? Because I know you did it. <laughs> There's no way you did. Did you? <laughs> yeah, you're out of this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> I know the answer. If I ask you, <laughs> I know the answer. Dude, yeah. Did you ever follow those expeditions that went to the like to to the lock? And they'd get those, you know, boats and go under and like search. Oh, bro, I went deep. Yeah, that, Bigfoot and, and Nessie are, are like peanut butter and jelly for me. Yeah, like yeah. I, I was like, <laughs> I was all about it. I mean, I told you guys, my brother and I were so crazy about Bigfoot for a while that um, we actually slept in the forest, thinking that we might like if we stay there long enough, we might catch Bigfoot. And then we did a whole tour of all these different Bigfoot sighting locations oh, in Northern California. And, and all there's museums around it. It's obviously, it's like <laughs> these people just profiteering off of like, like schmucks like like me and, and, and my brother. But, you know, it was fun, dude. You, like, who doesn't want Bigfoot to exist? Totally. totally. Right? And now, hold on. Yeah, Adam, he doesn't seem scary, right? He doesn't seem like Bigfoot seems, bro. Harry and the Henderson's no, yeah, great no, no, friendly. There's one so story friendly. that- I, I just want to believe he's like that. One story that I read that made me change my mind, because I thought he wasn't scary. And then there's a story of these campers, or I don't know- and it was like five of them that told a story of Bigfoot. First of all, you can smell him, right? He's got a strong smell. Yes. Then they do this yell, mm -hmm. and then he was throwing boulders at them and chasing them. Did you ever hear about that yeah, story? The, so the characteristics. So this is like a com. This is what like what they try to like classify as like commonalities of Bigfoot, right? So you hear like knocking noises. Yes. You get like things get thrown like mysteriously. You'll hear like whooping noises, mm -hmm. like like real loud, kind of like like what, guttural. <laughs> 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 Always have to make the example, huh? Like. Whoo! <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like that. Oh my god, it's so, so close. It was, it was like, you know, it'll just throw you off. Like you're in a, you're okay. in a tent, and you're like, oh shit, what was that? Yeah. Okay, since you guys uh, followed this stuff or read about it when you were younger, uh, when and you watch, and I, well, I watched Harry and the Henderson. I loved it as a kid. Um, did they do a good job of trying to portray the what Bigfoot was supposed to be like? like did they do? I know they made him smell. I remember that was like, oh, the, right, yeah. like he stunk. No, really, they really. made him goofy <laughs> and funny or whatever. Like the stories say yeah, that Bigfoot, like cartoonish, but that Bigfoot cool. is elusive. 
could be aggressive stories of him being aggressive mm-hmm. but mainly just very elusive like yeah. he doesn't like he doesn't <laughs> obviously because he's never yeah. been found <laughs> you know yeah, I know. yeah they gotta <laughs> keep that <laughs> all right so adam <laughs> when you're because i know you're you're a big scaredy cat with scary movies so yeah. i'm sure i was scared of harry and the henderson well, I was just gonna there's say. a part when he when they hit him it's all in how you look at it Oh yeah, and oh, as a yeah. kid, I'd be like this, you know. <laughs> and he yeah. gets up. I still do the. Hey, I still watch movies like that as an adult. You know, I just pretend like I'm doing do something. Really? Yeah, yeah. So we watch like a scary part. I'm like, hey, you know when we go. Hey, hey, <laughs> real we, important. Email, I got hold on Real a important email coming through right hold now. On a Adam, you're not watching. We got to come up with a bet or something. And well, then the, the what we got to do is if you lose this bet, I don't know what the bet is, but I'm gonna come up with something. Okay. If you lose. Justin and I get to ch- pick when Ooh, we go up to Trucky. Yes, a scary fucking movie. Okay, and Justin, I want to pick one that's gonna make that's really gonna make. Now I'm, I got a few bands, and then you have to watch. Hey, it. I'm a gamer, so I'm all about stuff like this. But it's got to be equally fair that there's got to be something that I get to do to you guys, or I have to put you guys through because that's torture for me, right? So yeah. I've I have already openly admitted. Right, well, can you come up with something? I'll think of something if we get a, if we do something and we find something that's competitive. And <laughs> is it, is it if, make us do yoga. Together? I don't know. Yeah. No, it's gonna be way better than that because in, in an hour and a half or two hours, right? Because it's a movie. Two hours of torturing me like that is just not... <laughs> it just I, fulfill it? Yeah. Like, one well, yoga session is not, like, tortured, you guys. You well, should be doing yoga. Well, what, so. when you were a kid, yeah. what's what's a... is Was there any legend or any... Anything in, along that category that you yeah, did Yeah, what did you subscribe in? to, yeah. dude? You had to think, like... Were you a big There's demons? some things that might, you know, like Chupacabra. He's like, probably, like, a demons and spirit person yeah. of it. Because he grew up with such a religious... Well, people. okay, so... I don't yeah. mean to put up, you know, Chupacabra just because you're Mexican. Yeah, what... <laughs> I just want to clarify. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, my sister. He's I'm scared of the chancla. The my chancla. S- my yeah. sister. Yeah. Te- you know what? Mine so was Bigfoot. So. You brought up the other day. I got I to gotta read them because I totally forgot all this. What, what was I scared of? Uh, <laughs> the pizza monster. <laughs> My, uh, you, ever, you ever hear of Linguini? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a monster that kills yeah. Italian kids. Yeah. <laughs> because with his pincher claws. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, is there anything you believed in when you were young? Well, I mean, you 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 know my history with my parents being very religious. Yeah. So definitely, like, I mean, I had the the mom that was like, you know, she, uh, speaking in tongues and like, so I saw stuff like that, right? So, mm. or, and like, they believed in spiritual warfare and that they- Dude, you know, yeah, can I tell a story okay. of, of what I saw? saw you actually do this this is my one of my favorite adam stories of all oh, time God, I, actually, I love you for it i don't know what did i do we here? we were in austin oh. and, and oh yeah and uh adam took way too much uh it was an alpha brain yeah way too alpha. many supplements yeah. we had all these supplements accessible to us and adam's the kind of guy like he'll just take whatever i take him but then i don't like know three times the the recommended dose i don't know he's taking other stuff on top of it so he took a, i don't know a toxic amount of these supplements <laughs> and all night long he's throwing up but yeah. the next, all vomiting yeah man. see the next yeah. day he's like oh, there was some spiritual warfare like, dude my head almost starts spinning he's <laughs> like, there were demons literally <laughs> trying to fight for me and i'm like you got sick bro i yeah. still <laughs> okay so there you go i still i still subscribe to that there was some spiritual shit going on right yeah. and you there's more to the backstory there right so this was also our first introduction to like the onnit crew and all that stuff like that and they're very much so into this like open relationship everyone's banging everyone and there's been reference like they're pulling to me there was some reference <laughs> yeah. there was some references was from succubus. my partners that you know aubrey has a very like cult like personality and it felt like that when we went in there so there's already this kind of like <laughs> You know, obviously, direct Your cackles were up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, if I, if I come from the other side of like believing in God and Jesus and like that, so that side of the fence, like that's like the direct opposite, right? This uh, cult leader, everyone's banging each other, doing ayahuasca drugs and stuff like that. Didn't help that I had a ram horn helmet on. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So all that's happening. Adam, then, you imagine if we knew it, what he was going through, and yeah. we just popped in the room to fuck oh with him. And, and then oh. Sal gives me these these uh, alpha brain pills on top of what I was heavily caffeinated. And I don't know what other supplement I took. And so I didn't just get an upset stomach. I actually projectile vomited harder and crazier than I ever have in my life. Like it came out of me like demons came out of me. <laughs> like it, and it was like, I didn't even yeah. eat that much and drink that much fluids for the day. That was why it was so weird. And I remember being like, whoa, that was just, and we were staying in their house, the on it house, yeah. right? So I was just like, <laughs> you know, something about that. So, now when this is, so, ha- yes, too I, many facts when this is happening, do you have like a picture like the, like, cause my grandma, when stuff happens, she'll have like candles of saints and she'll burn them or are you doing that? Or are you like, no, you that's doing? Katrina's. Right. 
side of the okay. Katrina's that way. Like anytime that Doing um, some hail marys, yeah. You know. No, she does the sage, right? So she 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 burns the sage. Anytime that I've been around a lot of people, she says I pick up their energy. Like mm-hmm. that's what they they uh. believe, right? So if I'm around a lot of different people and I come in and she be- they believe that you uh, negative energy is transferable. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm around somebody who's dealing with a lot of drama in their life, especially if I was communicating with them or close to them for an extended period of time of the day, I bring that home and she believes that she can sense it and feel it like the moment I walk in. Oh, so wow. mm-hmm. so like I always like she'll and, and we've obviously so you guys been, like wipe it all off. Oh god, like, well originally yeah. like I, her and I would go back and forth but what the fuck are you doing? But now I mean I'm, I love her for it, right? So and I it, I just kind of chuckle but as soon as I walk in and if she feels that she senses that she don't even ask me I just all of a sudden see it lit and she's over mm. the top of my head really <laughs> yeah to the stuff. is that when she's like yeah. Adam you're really attractive right now yeah. have you been around Sal <laughs> no, <laughs> no no so yeah so okay so that was that was probably my uh, but I actually I, I didn't believe it right so that was actually yeah. my pushback like my family when we were kids I think we went to seven or eight different uh, denominations like and everything from like oh, yeah. Pentecostal, First Baptist, Methodist, non-denominational. Um, Did you ever go to the ones where they pass around snakes? I had a friend that went. Not, to no one. way! I really? swear to God, he went to. I swear he went to one where they Dude, passed around. I've seen that. I've never snakes. met somebody that went. Yeah, and, and and apparently the snakes are poisonous, but they if they don't bite you because you. I don't remember what. No, I haven't is. seen that, but I have been to some where like when the the uh, worship part like so normally when you get to church that's kind of like the early the first half is or the first. 20 20 minutes or whatever yeah. that is like worship right so someone playing the playing the music and everything and when they when you do that like people get so much into it people are waving their uh, hands speaking in yeah. tongues yep. and people are flip, flick, flicking their high heels off and dancing down the halls and stuff like that yeah. and the pastor would do like slaying like the spirit people what's that like seizures and what's that thing? guy uh billy something or the oh was, where he touches them yeah and they fall yeah yeah, yeah so they, they oh, yeah. throw like this pur- this purple thing over the top like a purple blanket over top of them and then hit them and they fall over and stuff like that and they look at their Going into convulsion, you know what? And that, and dude, I'm like, uh, dude, that's like a James Brown move, right? Yeah, there. I'm like in <sighs> sixth grade, I want to say around that. Wow. So I'm like taking all this in. Wow, but I, I, I rejected it. Like, so you know, I had to go as my parents are taking us there. But my sister and I, who are one year apart, we both were like, like, nah, dude. <laughs> this is you know. You're like, can we just yeah. sing the song? Like, yeah, oh, what's all this? You know what it reminds me of? You ever watch? There's a, I think a page on Instagram called, I think it's called McDojo, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You ever yeah. seen these martial arts experts? Yeah, like the and fake, fake karate. Yeah, stuff. why are they? They're always obese, by the way, and and they'll do like where they'll just move their shoulder yeah. or they'll do this with their hand and like knock people out. Like, you know, uh, what's the one? They're like the same people, dude. Yeah. It's ridiculous. David sure. Carradine, right? No. Uh, no. From, he was like oh, one from my, Kung Fu? Yeah, that was like one of my favorite yeah. shows. I love that so, show. So no, there was this one guy. So I used to read when I was a kid. Uh, here's something I don't know if you guys knew. I was super nerdy about martial arts. I used to subscribe to Black Belt Magazine and all these others, right? And there was this guy that practiced this martial art called Dim Mok. D-I-M-M-A-K. Maybe you can look it up, Doug. And there's this one dude, and it's pressure point fighting. And apparently, he would like hit like two hit two points on you, and he'd knock you out. And it was like this big thing, and everybody talked about it. And it was like this. Mis- anyway, uh, there was this like investigative journalist that went to this guy, and he said, "Go ahead and knock me out with the thing." And of course, he couldn't. And then he came up with some excuses like, "Well, your tongue was in the wrong position, in your mouth. <laughs> of course, and it blocked yeah. the chi." You, you don't actually believe, so yeah, it's not dude. working on you. Yeah, it reminds me of that, you know, because the followers of this guy would clearly get knocked out. He would do this thing to them, and they would test them. They're like, "Oh no, they're actually unconscious." Well, that's what you would see at the, the church. That that part obviously was interesting, right? Yeah, you would that you would see people go up there. But I mean, it just shows you too the power of like if you want something bad enough, yourself, totally, like because you're you're bought into it, totally. you want it so bad to happen. Well, so. you see acting on both parts, you know, both parties. The one that's like telling you you got this demon in you, yeah. and then then like, yeah, I do have this demon in me, and then you try and act the part. Yeah, you know, I've seen that. What's the, like, but this who's is the all- guy that did Dim Mock, Doug? Does it say his name? I don't see it here. Yeah, maybe you can look up Dim Mac uh, founder. founder. Yeah. yeah. He was this weird dude, but then he got kind of found out because, you know, MMA changed a lot with martial mm. arts. A lot of that mysticism and the this is too dangerous to practice or whatever, martial arts, like, wiped that out. Yeah. Um, excuse me, yeah. MMA wiped that out because, yeah. because then you saw people actually fight. See, yeah. the, the, the five-finger. <laughs> Steve 
Aoki, but no. I don't think that's right. No, that's not. <laughs> oh, his Dim Records. That's the name of his record company. Dim uh, Mac, he named it Steve. Dim Mac Records is the name of the Steve Aoki's uh, company, I wow, guess. Wow, that's pretty smart. But that's not... Uh, now, look up who founded Dim Mac Martial Art or, yeah. or Pressure Point Fighting. Maybe I'm spelling it wrong, but anyway. Uh, anyway, yeah. it's interesting stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I do think that, you know, if anything is true, I do think that spiritual warfare would be true. I mean, yeah. everything's such a duality in life. There's always two sides. So that would make So, me, I, oh. yeah, and I, I've come full circle in that journey in my life, right? So as a kid, so you guys were asking if I subscribed to it. I was the opposite. Actually, I totally, like, rejected it. And, and to a point when I became an adult, like, I didn't want anything to do with church at all. And I was kind of anti all that stuff. I've kind of come full circle now on that. Now... I don't subscribe to how some of these people, how radical some yeah. of these people are. Like, you know, what pushed yeah. me away from it was, you know, when I was a kid, my mom would always say like that, you know, God told her this, you know, God told her to do this. God told her to do that. And like, it was a lot of really bad decisions. I was like, <laughs> yeah. like all knowing powerful God can't be this dumb. You know what I'm saying? Like, Did he tell you to get a job? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, any sense. Yeah. so I had a really hard time yeah. with that for a long time. And, and then I realized like, okay, I can't totally deny everything just because of somebody else's one person's interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll explore and see if there's something there for me. And so kind of like you in a sense, although I never was like this staunch atheist mm -hmm. over it, but I think uh, I had a different opinion about it for a long time. And then over time, I've seen the the what you say all the time the, the spiritual wisdom that comes from yeah, it, that's, that's, and that's what kind of brought me back to being more open to it. Yeah, I have a similar experience because I did see a lot of different variations of that, and I went to school and like um, you know, so there was lots of applicable like sound you know moral type of of uh, you know application I could I could apply to my own life uh, you know just just being through that, but also I saw how like different a lot of people were using it and and uh you know you'd saw i actually saw a lot of mental illness like uh, like in those settings of like how i'm i'm just like wondering uh, you, you know, it looks, it, it's very, it's very much like multiple personality disorders. I saw that like happening. And so it's like, it's this weird thing where it's celebrated and then they turn it into like, it, the, you know, it's this sort of uh, spiritual battle that this person is in and they're not recognizing the mental illness part of it. And so it's just, it's interesting to me to see how, um, you know, how, how it's yeah. like such a spectrum, uh, you know, within the religious setting. I really think because of all that, I'm like, that's what makes me where I'm so the, I'm the other guy who like, you got to really prove to me sure. to me to get bought in. Otherwise, I'm always skeptical. I'm yeah. always going to assume, ah, that's some bullshit. Yeah. Like until you prove, until it's been proven to me enough times. <laughs> like you are when I talked about carbon, yeah, carbon no, dating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that just is like, it's, sure. you know, unless someone is like really, unless I have read something or somebody has made an intelligent enough argument to really convince me on something, I'll, I'll always weigh on the skeptical, I don't believe it side until it's been well, confirmed the, for the me. Well, the truth is if something has a lot of power and influence, it's going to get, there's going to be people who are going to distort it and there's going to be people that use it. I don't care what it is, by of the course, way. It could be right. anything. Anything with power and influence you're going to get people who are nefarious who are going to use it for their own. You know. So why are we now seeing mythical beasts pop up after the UFO thing? I'm telling you, dude. Yeah. We're yeah, now what's this all about? Loch Ness Monster, yeah. Bigfoot. What's coming. next, dude? I don't know, dude. I feel like Hollywood's setting the table just for this yeah, epic, abominable epic, snowman. epic movie in 2000, <laughs> the end of the year. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. They're just, yeah. they're we just, got to like, the season finale is coming yeah. to a head here, <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, I, what do you guys, let me ask you this. What do you guys think the reaction would be, honest, right? The reaction would be but from the public if the government came out because by the way this is happening right right now in the month of june the government's declassifying stuff everybody's waiting on ufo stuff what do you think let's say they came out and said here's a deal aliens are real we've captured two of them here's the bodies what do you think the reaction would be so 10 years ago i would just think there'd be pandemonium and it would be insane and just chaos and riots and it would be scary almost right I actually don't think everyone would. I think people would be like, no big deal. Really? Yeah. I literally think it would be a conversation on the news for like a week and then it would be like, no big deal. <laughs> I really do. I think we've seen so much bullshit in the yeah, last year. We're so numb. <laughs> yeah, we're so numb to it. Someone's like, well, as long as they're not trying to kill anybody or do anything yeah. crazy, like, oh, no big deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, do the aliens have COVID? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah like, please what, tell me that. Yeah, okay, are they falling, I don't want to wear a mask Are again. they following COVID protocols? That's what, that's, <laughs> that would be the question. Like, yeah. No. Yeah, I, I really, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if it would actually make uh i don't think it would make that big of a deal uh, now if something ha like a alien came in and, and did something in the public right yeah. where you know kidnapped a child or did something Bro, I, like that would create some 
crazy. I think up. we're in the era of like conspiracy theories just exploding because the internet has made it so easy to share this kind of stuff. Yeah. Boy, would that spur insanity, is my opinion. I think mm. it would spur all kinds of craziness. Oh, here's what's happening. They've been among us the whole time. That's what the government is. Oh, yeah. no. Like it would turn into like uh, just insanity. I see know? that. Oh, I could see the, the yeah. conspiracy. First question What's with the probes? Yeah. 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 <laughs> why in the butt? Let's cover this. Why can't you probe yeah, something why? else? Why is <laughs> yeah. it always up in the butt? Uh, yeah. why, every sense. time, you yeah. know? Speaking of crazy, ridiculous stuff, this is, I can't believe it. I read this and this is legit. So here's the, here's the title of this, uh, of this article. So, an Italian artist. So sells invisible sculpture for eighteen thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> How many suckers were? Just were ga- that's gangster, right dude. there, bro. Oh, that's so, so that's the ultimate. So, so his name, the guy's name is uh, Salvatore <laughs> Gorau. So he's got oh, the same name as I do. I hey, was gonna say, <laughs> well, hey, that's a common hey, name. Bro. Brilliant, you know, yeah. brilliant. Listen, to what he said he created a masterpiece made from air and spirit. And it ended up selling it for eighteen thousand dollars. Is that for real? Yeah, for real. So he sold bought. it to a private buyer for fifteen thousand pounds. So, excuse me, fifteen thousand euros. Wow. So like, what kind of scam are they running? Like he had to be in on it with them. I don't know, dude. The vacuum is nothing more than a space full of energy, and even if we empty it and there is nothing left, according to the Heinsberg's uncertainty principle, that nothing has a weight. Therefore, it has energy that is condensed and transformed. Into particles, that is, into us. Oh my God! Well, where is Eight, this eighteen grand entity? I, you, I don't know where it is. Now. You know what makes it me could ma- be anywhere. No, Justin. but I mean, it's like, in the room right now. Okay, so, but <laughs> I bought it. But like, I'm, it I'm no, buying I this invisible he, thing. Yeah, no, I imagine it's got. Is there a picture? I imagine it's like a glass, a glass yeah, is there, case. Is it contained? Or yeah, is totally. This just like, has to be. Uh, has to be free range. Has to be contained in a glass thing with like some. So sort now of you got to mime, you know, whatever this thing is. Yeah, no, no, it's literally a taped off square. And nothing in it. A taped off square. That's what it is. Can you transport it then? Yeah. I mean, I mean, did okay. So no did the guy that bought it actually go all the way through with this dumb thing and, and be like, oh, awesome, and then like pretend to like grab it <laughs> and carry it? You know, like, coming, how did, how did you're he, coming with me. Did, how do you get it home? Yeah. Uh, did dude, he have to rent a exactly. U-Haul? I think yeah. you just think about it. Maybe I have no idea. Like that's great. Do you know what it what sounds? happens when somebody contaminates the air? That's it. Right you there. Know, just walks by and crop dusts it. Yeah. Look, <laughs> look at that. You're gonna ruin my sculpture. It's beautiful. <laughs> so, it, it's uh, anything yeah, you want it to yeah, be. Yeah, what do you see? Yeah, what do you, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely forming into something. This makes me realize that there's people in the world with <laughs> so much money that they just, they they don't know what to do with it, so they want to be weird. It's insulting, really. You know what I mean? They're yeah. Like, um, like, you can't use that money for something. Like, like think about it. Well, don't, you, help kind of, people. don't think, you kind of feel like that's what's going on with these NFTs and stuff like yeah. that, too? Like, it's very similar. Well, think about it. I think it's really dumb. Imagine if we're all, like, like children of billionaires. And I don't say billionaires. I say children of billionaires, because it's always people who don't make the money that are idiots like this. It's always their kids, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So imagine if we're kids of billionaires and I want to flex on Adam. I want to show him like how much money I have. Yeah, and this guy's it. like, hey, Watch this. hey, 18 grand to buy this nothing. And I'd be like, sure, here you go. No, do you remember you know the, what I'm saying? Do you remember yeah. the story? I think I brought this up on the podcast a few years back. Maybe Doug can look this up. The, the, the Red Dot app. So there was an app and it costs like a million dollars and there's and and it, all it does is like show up on your screen like a like a, a red dot. I think it's say, look up like a, a million dollar app red dot app or something and see what what you get. It's, million dollar red dot app. So yeah, and, and and all it does is display it on your phone, and only so many people can have it. And so a guy made a bunch of money off. I it. am rich. Eight, yeah, eight people bought. Yeah, there useless it is. Useless thousand dollar. It was a thousand dollar. It was a thousand. Yeah. It's called I am rich. Okay, that's what it was. Well, wait, would you well, pay it's a one million thing. for a red dot pixel? Oh, that's oh, an NFT. Never mind. That's okay. something else. I can't remember. It was a long time ago it, when it, I. Sh- well, the I am rich app is is a thousand bucks. Still, Let me see. It, what mean, does that say right there? The app was released on. I don't know what Doug opened. Now he moved. I can't read it. Anymore. <laughs> 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 this, this is a losing game we're playing right here. Yeah. No, but there was something like that where I think he only sold so many of them, and you knew if someone had that app that they spent X amount of dollars, and so. Yeah, that was totally. Well, think about it. If this is what you think your value is, your money, and you want to show off, how do you walk around with people knowing you make a lot of money? Right. One way is to spend Maseratis it. and Lambos are a thing of the past. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. everybody has a Lamborghini. Yeah. But did you spend eighteen thousand dollars on nothing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how rich I am. Well, I think of this too. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you. I'm sure people speculated. Like after the guy who did the um, the the pet rock. 
you mm-hmm. know, like God, what's the next pet rock? Like this is the next level yeah, right here. Like nothing. Yeah. Wow, that oh, is man, so, pure profit. So mad, amazing. <laughs> that's uh, that's seriously insane. And yeah, people have way too much money to be able to do stuff. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of money, you taxed on that. Speaking of money, prices of things are going up a lot. You Inflate. guys seeing all this inflation that's happening? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's coming. I, I read somewhere that like, it was coming. I read somewhere like things that are like way more expensive. I read somewhere condom prices are. Up. Yeah, no, the purchasing of that. I actually read that. That was like up condom purchases are up like 36%. Oh, purchases. Yeah, <laughs> luggage is up like 400%. So what's ha- people are spending is what's yeah. happening. That's what's going on right now. The Airbnb stuff is going up. Hotel yeah, stuff. Everything's opening going- up. Yeah, everybody's like starting to spend more towards that yeah, direction. Well, I remember when we taught, well, we haven't aired this episode yet, but we're, we're getting ready to an air the, the Peter Lineman uh, Economist oh, right. episode, right? And he, he talked about the amount of money that people have saved up. So there's there's a lot of money. And they're ready to spend it. And so it's you want to try and predict where they're going to spend it to see yes. prices going up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you guys think? If you speculate on like smart investments or smart things. I think travel. Travel too, for sure. I think travel is going to explode. All I think the people elements have of been it. Even so, hotels, which yes. is, I think, uh, crazy if you would have asked me that, you know, a year or two years ago, because you, we thought that industry was dead because of Airbnb and, and, and VRB. Well, no, I think if you own Airbnb, you're probably going to Well, crush. that's still going to crush, but I'm saying there's going to be overflow because the demand is so high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I agree with that. I think yeah, because think about it. Everybody felt so cooped up. They were isolated. Yeah, now yeah. they feel safe to, and, and the first thing you want to do is get the hell yeah. out of Dodge yeah. and travel. So I would imagine that that's probably going to explode yeah. in Ta- cost. Talking about business, totally. you know, I was reading an article about Harley Davidson had like one of their uh, you know worst years this this past year in COVID and stuff, which I thought was interesting because I thought a lot of people would be buying bikes, yeah, to, to go road trip or do something. Yeah, like. so and they didn't. They had a dip, and so but but what they attributed it to is that they're not in like the the touring bike m- m- market, and that's exploding. Like the BMWs and the Hondas, like oh. this generation kind of growing up, kind of you know Harleys are kind of like. Like our, like dad, yeah, 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 older generation, and it's not like the younger guy is into the you know the touring bike. Mm-hmm. Plus, immediately you have to like join the biker gang. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, like if, if you, you have a Harley, yeah. like, otherwise you're, you're gonna get punked. Yeah, you're a loner, yeah, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so they're getting into that. So they actually are re- getting ready to release their their really their, yeah they're getting into that market. <laughs> but the part that was really interesting about this article, I was reading further on into it, and it actually talked about something they did because they're talking about different things that Harley's done to explore different streams of revenue mm. and try and like find other ways to increase uh, revenue. In 1994, did you know that they actually tried to move into the the cologne and perfume uh, market? Wow. Harley? Harley did. What? Yeah, with a, with a, with a smell smell called like a wheel. Hot Rod. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. Hey, babe, I want to yeah. smell like a biker. Yeah, hot. <laughs> failed, yeah. failed miserably. Wow. As well, you can imagine. Smells like rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Now, have either one of you ever had a motorcycle license or nothing like that? Nah, yeah, no. I have I have a funny story, well, kind of funny story about how that went. So when I was 22, um, I was about to buy a bike. Um, now you were going to do the, the 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 racing ones, right? Yeah, I was. I was. I was actually looking at. I was exploring both ideas, right? Like I I really like Harley's, but I also thought street bikes were really cool at this time. So I wasn't dead set on what kind of bike yet. Yeah. But I was I was going to buy a bike. Like I'd saved up money. I thought it was a good idea for here in the Bay Area commute and some of that great gas and like you know there's a bunch of trainers. I thought about getting a chopper at one point. So yeah, yeah I'm 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 like gonna make a purchase in the, the next six months to a year. Well, before. I I do, I, I start inquiring from all my friends that have bikes, you know, just their experience and how much they love them. Oh, this is and, so crazy. I had a sim- I bet you're going to hear the same thing. And so there's a, as well. there's a question I start asking and uh, because I, I, I know a couple of them well and they had shared their stories where they had crashed their bikes where they had gone 17, the yep. bike flies out from underneath yeah. them. And so... I start asking them uh, about, have you crashed your bike? And and w- what I start hearing back from everybody is like, every every everybody. one of them, every single one of yeah, them, you will say it said to me, you will crash it. Yes, it's and inevitable. You, and you'll get hit by a car. Well, <laughs> well, they didn't all say that, but they all okay, said everyone I know. Yeah, they told me it's inevitable. Yeah, you're gonna lay it down. You at some will point. either lay it down yep. or get hit by a car. You'll crash your bike. It's just part of owning a bike. Yeah. And I heard that from enough people. Not everybody. Same I, here. Same that, story. To me, I was like. 
I just don't that's feel crazy. I don't feel comfortable signing up for the fact I'm going to crash. Like, <laughs> that is it just it didn't sit well yeah, with me. Yeah. And it was enough just anticipating it. Yeah, like, it was enough for me to not pursue it. And I still think about it all the time because I do I think Harleys are really cool. I would love to have one. Yeah. But that sits in the back of my mm-hmm. mind all the time. These guys all telling Dude, me that. Same experience. But my uh I, my roommate in college, he had one of those like crazy fast ninja bikes. And, uh, you know, he's in the Air Force and everything. He's like, you know, totally doing the whole, uh, you know, Tom Cruise top gun, like, like with his aviators and all that. He like, uh, so this person like backs out of their driveway, this, this truck, and it totally doesn't see him right in front of him. He had to throw his bike underneath the truck and he like totally messed up his face and like his whole body got like road rash and raw. He came back and he, he never touched a bike again. Did you know, you guys know that my sister Cassie had a street bike? Like wow. a, like a super, no yeah, a super fast bike, her and Tom. Well, and I can't see her. I know that. they, they both, she got, he was already into it. He got her into it. And Tom, they, yeah, he's crazy. Well, you right. And so one of the, like, it was early on when they first were getting together that, uh, it was one of the, and one of the first times I ever met him, I met him in, uh, one of those full casts where, you know, their arms are stuck oh, like wow. this and it has the bar that connects it and he's all braced up. <laughs> That's how I'm one of the first times I met Tom. Oh he was God. in with those because wow. he, he crashed it so bad, almost died. And then my sister said, we have to sell him. And so he hasn't ridden that since then. You know, my great my great grandfather, that's how he died on oh, a motorcycle. Really? Wow. Yeah. He, he was uh, riding his bike. And, you know, in Sicily in those days, uh, you, you don't own cars. They're too expensive. You have one motorcycle for the whole family. In fact, uh, there, I have pictures of my grandfather with his entire family on one motorcycle. So like oh him. Oh yeah, that's crazy. No, no, seriously. Him, his wife, she's holding the baby. Oh kids, hang, kids hanging kids off the side, off the back. That's because crazy. Because that's all they could afford. And so if they had to go anywhere that required that's crazy. an automobile, they would take the, the motorcycle or whatever. But yeah, my great-grandfather, wow. he died that way. He got hit by a, a big truck. Yeah, and uh, died early. Because well, I told you guys, my my grandpa was like this real meek. Like he was actually a, 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 a interior designer, like back in the fifties, you know, which is like a totally different thing than it is now. But like, like he's he was really like quiet, artistic, and uh, we found like, old pictures uh, just lying around, and I found a picture of him on this like Indian motorcycle. Uh, with 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 a pistol well, and everything and like <laughs> dude and he was in a biker gang legit I had no idea he never told any of us wow <laughs> I was like who are you wow that's really cool yeah it was, it was awesome yeah my dad my dad still rides uh, motorcycles he has the cruiser so he has the he's you know he's got the BMW cruiser but then he also has a Ducati and he still to this day it's his favorite thing to do is to go and he rides my dad's very scary with his motorcycle because he's been riding since he was a kid. And uh, speaking of my dad, you want to hear something funny? Well, talk, okay. Talk, oh, go, no, I got to tell you a Ducati and a spiritual story since you just freaking said that. Oh, go, go. So this is a trip too, okay? And this is this is true story, and it's and it's, to this day it still happens. So uh, Katrina's dad, Troy, who passed away, what, four four years ago now? Five years? Well, maybe it's been a little long. When we first started the podcast, he passed. You mm-hmm. remember? I think it's mm-hmm. been like five yeah. years. Yeah, it's been yeah. around that, right? So he was big into motorcycles. He had a few of them, and his, his baby, the one he loved, was his Ducati. And after he passed, and this it's it's still in uh, Tina won't get his uh, his wife right Katrina's mom won't get rid of this bike right and it has it has a picture of him and her that sits on it and she keeps it in the garage and it's like it's she's that's one of the th- one thing that she won't get rid of of mm-hmm. his it's like that was his baby and stuff and this is part of the reason why is because it will it cries every once in a while it makes this at hasn't been charged hasn't been started in years and it. it what? No, it doesn't. Ooh, that's crazy. I have multiple times. You heard it? Heard it multiple times. It's got releasing some kind of gas or something. Of, going. It's a scientific. Uh, of, of course, the skeptical brain of mine says that too. But yeah. it is wild. I want you to film that. I will. Oh, I actually, weird. I actually think Tina actually has video of it. How so I'll, I'll ask her. I'll have her send it over because it's happened enough times that it's just so wild. Everybody in the family goes like, did somebody start it? Did somebody plug it in? No, 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 no. Just randomly out of the blue sometimes. And it w- even weirder, it normally does happen around a, a holiday or like something like, the, oh, that was an anniversary of Tina and his, like trippy as That's fuck. weird. Whoa, I told Jessica that if, if I ever die, if I die before her, I'm going to haunt her. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, babe, don't worry. If I die, I'm not going away. Right, I'm going right, to totally right. haunt the shit out of you. In the no, bedroom. No, I was going to say about my dad, you want to talk about like, you know, r- r- relations and genetics. 
genetics or whatever. So my dad's hilarious. He's kind of like me with certain with supplements. Okay, he's a little bit like me. He'll take something and then it's like the be all end all or whatever. So I actually I'm glad I it's not a mistake. I'm glad I did this, but I gave him uh, a full bottle of Ned to my dad. Because my dad's got lots of pain. the regular fifteen hundred one. What did you give yeah. him? The regular, the, okay. this one, the hemp oil. Yeah, the really the, the strong hemp oil. So, strong one. Yeah. So Ned yeah. says us the strong one, the fifteen hundred milligram yeah. one, right? So I give that to my dad, and my dad's got arthritis up and down his spine mm-hmm. from you know working since he was a child, hard late, you know whatever can barely turn his neck or whatever. So I give it to him. And my mom immediately she's like, "Is this good for him? Like you know your dad, he gets obsessive. Like are you sure? Like whatever." Yeah. I said, "Yes, it's fine." Is he going to trip out? Or oh no, no, no psychoactive. No, he's been taking it for you know he'll take it for a few days and then uh, you know he gives me a call and he goes, "Salvatore." I'm like, "Yeah, what's up, pal?" He goes, "I like it." I'm like, "What do you mean you like it?" He goes, "I feel really good." I feel like uh, maybe I go back to judo. I don't know. Maybe my, my, <laughs> and my mom's like, I fucking like, told you. Slow your roll. Like I told you. What are you yeah. doing, dude? No, no, your dad wants to go back and start training again. <laughs> my dad's 60 something and is like, he's stiffer than a board because of the arthritis. And he's already telling me, I feel good. Maybe I feel, I don't know. I feel like I could turn and throw people. What do you think? I'm like, yeah. I don't know, dad. Maybe you should, now you should he, wait a little bit. Take your time. Yeah. Is he like you or he's like anti like muscle relaxers and, and like pills like that? Or does he avoid that or does he use uh, things like that at all? No, he doesn't like medications. Yeah. He does not. In fact, he doesn't react well uh, to medication. That is the reason yeah. why I was asking you because that's what I have found with when I introduce somebody to that product, it normally is someone who's like that, who is like they've been kind of anti pills, they don't want to deal with that, and you show them that. Is there something like if somebody is like, let's say you're like a heavy like Norco user and you've used that, yeah. is there something that's going on with the receptors that would well, impede I mean, somebody being able to really feel the benefits of that? Well, no. So, and, and just, you know, I want to be cautious, okay, because I don't want to give medical advice here, okay, but they do find that when in the studies that I've read, okay, that when people use cannabinoids, uh, so like, you know, hemp oil obviously is full of CBD and other cannabinoids, that when people use them, they reduce their intake of uh, traditional painkillers. In some cases, uh, in some of the studies, people stop using Mm -hmm. uh, their traditional painkillers. Now, why is this a good thing? Because it doesn't have the same side effects. It's not negative uh, to your body in the same way. It's not as addictive, uh, for sure. That's a big one. So, But again, it worked for my dad. It worked really, really well because what he has is kind of the systemic inflammation and he feels much looser. Now, the side effect of this that's bad is now my dad thinks he's going to go- Do judo. Do judo, <laughs> which will probably hurt him. So yeah. please don't <laughs> please do not do that. Oh, but funny. I mean, but yeah, it's it's got that effect. Again, I gave him the strong bottle, a 1500 mig uh, one yeah. that he's taken that he, that he really likes. So, yeah. But it's hilarious to hear him do this because he'll start to feel good and then we'll go over. And then I know what happens is he'll, he'll we'll start talking and then it'll start like this somehow. He'll be like, you know- I start to feel really good, you know? I start to feel really good. And Jessica looks at me, she knows what he's about to do. And then he'll come up with some like, hey, you think you could lift this? And I'm like, oh, here we go. Oh, that's yeah. so great. Here comes the competitions. Although he still kicks my ass at a lot of stuff, so I can't I can't talk shit. You know, he's got kind of that that old school uh, Sicilian strength or whatever. Oh, Speaking yeah. of with uh, training, how's the training? Let's give a little training update. Everybody's super focused right now. I saw you working out yesterday real hardcore. Yeah, no. Are I, you trying to do it when we're not working out because you want to hide? That's what he does, yeah, dude. Yeah. That's you the stupidest thing that too, huh? <laughs> I know everything. I mean, what, <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm all undercover. Then? Yeah, so dumb. Undercover Adam. Uh, I joke about that, but it's really not those reasons. It's... uh. Lately, there's been a lot of stuff that I've either got calls or emails I got to respond to in the got morning it. morning time. Got it. And so I still get here when you guys do, but you've been seeing me kind of sitting on my phone a lot of times when I'm I'm here, and then you see me maybe do a few exercises here, and then I'm training at home a lot right now. I'm also uh, I've cut back on the volume because of the the golfer's elbow was 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 bothering me so much, so I've had to kind of reduce. You it. look like you're building muscle though. I wonder mm. if you were doing too much volume. Period. I probably was. That's, I mean, always that's our, our thing, right? We always overreach. Isn't that funny? Yeah, no, yep. it's definitely the, well, it, you get the moment. <laughs> we know better too. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I'm, I'm better. I get better every year about, you know, seeing it and, and, and realizing it quicker and backing off. And so, and I've just, I've been really good about my diet. So I, it's a lot of times you'll see me, like, I feel like I, I, I've, make myself work out even if I think I shouldn't maybe work out because I know that my diet wasn't ideal and I'm like my oh. my thought process on those times are like okay it, I didn't eat I ate a lot of extra calories yesterday and not my diet's not dialed in I need to be doing some training I need to burn some extra calories hopefully some of these calories get partitioned into building muscle and so that's the logic of training mm-hmm, when I know mm-hmm. I probably shouldn't be training mm-hmm. but when I'm really dialed in uh, I oh, I won't train so a, a lot of times I've been taking days off 
just because I know that I probably should use the rest and I don't need yeah. much or doing very little volume. Well, right. no, you guys are yeah. both doing really well. I love seeing it. Everybody's <clears throat> crushing. I know, Justin, you were trying to flex your abs to Adam. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I did. Which is yeah. so strange to me. I don't know why, why would you ask me? I don't know what, what, what <laughs> yeah, prompted me to do that. I think it was the, the, the Mind Pump meme guy, you know, like, like jabbing at me for just doing cheese and Star Wars, <laughs> uh, you know, posters instead of like show my abs like you guys i honestly i'm like waiting because like this is this is, this is a work in progress and and i've been pretty dialed in and consistent with my nutrition so i'm like i'm, I'm in the the sort of transitionary phase right now where i'm like i don't really know what's on the other side of it because i haven't gone much further than this before so uh, i'm really trying to kind of push myself through that normal like i i will block myself here's where i'm gonna usually we'll start introducing alcohol back in or mm -hmm. let some things kind of come and be like ah this is stupid you know like uh, i'm over it i feel good i feel great like that's all i really care about <laughs> uh but now i'm like i want to see if i can actually see something now here's the, this is the challenge for someone like you because i feel like i'm in between the both of you when it comes to strength performance and, and aesthetics right yeah the challenge for me is always when I cut the calories is I lose strength and then that's a mind game. Yeah. You are so strength and performance focused yeah. and you could honestly give a shit about aesthetics for the most part. Are you feeling challenged right now? Yeah, dude. It's uh, yeah. It, and I've, I've tried to adjust that by really trying to work more into movements and activity and, and, and upping that in terms of like how I feel athletic. Uh, so I backed off a little bit on the intensity of like heavy weights and, uh, you know, grinding my way through that, which I love that, you know, and I know you're, you're, you're the same way with some of that stuff, but, uh, I've been trying to, to refocus on, um, getting more core work in and, and trying to add more multiplanar movement and, uh, just just literally doing walks at every minute yeah. of the day, like that I can get up, like go shoot hoops with my kids. Like I'm, I'm really like finding opportunities to, uh, I'm going to go climb on this over here. Like I'll just think of something that I can do that, that'll like activate my whole body. You know, one of the things I'm, I'm really enjoying right now about training or, or that I'm realizing about myself, my body and stuff of getting older um, there's, there is some really cool benefits uh, of getting older. If you've trained, you know, pretty much your, your whole life. Like I, I see how little I have to do if I, if I keep my diet in check. Oh, right? you're right. You, you do way less now than you did before. Way, yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. way, way less. What and, a great message, by the way. It's like you set yourself up yeah. for when you get older. I mean, to me, that is like one of the, the haze in the barn. That's one what of the, always say. Mm -hmm. the haze in the barn. Yeah. One of the coolest parts of getting older and have trained for, for over two decades now is that I, I don't have to do, and I don't. I have to do a, a fraction of what I was doing 15 years ago. It's so true. And I have a better physique than what I did 15 years ago, which is very it's, cool. It's so true, yeah. and it's such a hallmark uh, advantage of resistance training. I don't think you could do that with other forms of exercise, but because of that muscle memory, like all the hard work you put in, you, like I see this with Jessica right now. She's seven months after the baby was born. She can barely squeeze in a workout here or there because the sleep is so bad. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, man, your body is so resilient because of all the work yep. that you did, you know, beforehand. You know, one of the one of the uh, values of supersets is because oftentimes, if you you'll see in a program, supersets are put during the cutting phase, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, it's because you burn more calories. That's not the value. You know what the real value of supersets is for me? Mm. Is that I know I have to go lighter anyway. Supersets you can't go heavy anyway. So if I'm already not as strong because I'm dieting, then I might as well do a superset because with the superset, you can't focus on weight anyway. So yeah. it's all yeah. it's all up here. It's all mental for me. So yeah. you'll see me do that with shorter rest periods because it's like, well, I'm not going to be hitting PRs it, anyway. It's so funny because like just getting back into cardio, like I feel great. Like, you know, we, we talk, uh, you know, about ways to, to uh, you know, manipulate your, your body composition and everything by lifting weights and kind of st staying in yeah. that uh, train of thought. But um, like I was, I posted that stupid video of me just doing like parkour and messing around and all that stuff, I could see how stiff I am in my movements and just like, ah, uh, like I just doing like one little jump and then landing on like a hard surface, like just totally jolted my lower back. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is embarrassing. So I got to work on that. Like I get work on like, um, you know, the overall functionality yeah. of my body athleticism. So I'm just kind of leaning more into that. Now, is there something that you like a staple exercise or routine or move that you do when you, when that kind of clicks for you? Like I, re I remember I had the same 
a feeling when I, I, I jumped out of the truck. Remember I told you guys, oh, I, thought, right. I thought my knees yeah. were going to explode. I was just like, <laughs> what the hell? You know, like that's a skill that I never thought I wouldn't have. And I have it. I've had it since I was a kid for the first time ever. It, I, I felt that. And so instantly I was in the gym and I had specific movements that I was doing. Right. So do you have things that you go Honestly, to? Honestly, yeah, I, I, I adjust my squats more to like the multiplanar lunges. That's like my first yeah. move because it's, to me, um, you know, being in a split stance position and uh, it, focusing on different planes of movement, it just feels like I, I, uh, I'm just more athletic. I have more. Uh, I could stabilize myself, uh, you know, from a lot more different factors versus like I, I'm just so been so rigidly in the sagittal plane, even though I talk on the show all the time about uh, trying to incorporate like more rotation and all this. I just have to like really start to lean into that more. Yeah, I started doing, uh, I got doing the sled drives. That That's a big one. And then I started yeah. doing box jumps. Me too. No joke. I started yeah. doing a little bit of box jumps here and there. And uh, boy, if you don't practice something, you lose that skill. Yep. I, I, I For the first couple of weeks I was doing it, I was like, this is embarrassing. If somebody <laughs> saw me right now, <laughs> yeah. this would make it on Instagram. It would be a joke. You know? <laughs> Some cobwebs there, dude. Yeah, yeah but, but, I, like, but I can feel myself getting better you yeah, know, each yeah, time. Yeah, totally. Is that one of ours that you got in your hand right there? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, you mean the mirror? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to You get... put the stickers on it, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, this yeah, is cool. A, yeah, right? Yeah, it yeah. makes it a little bit Let's cooler. Let's stay authentic. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. no. Speaking of mirror, though, I actually... Uh, I just asked Chokey to do um, th bring back the original ones that we did. So we've gone through and done like all, I think we've now done maybe 12. I mean, what I love, by the way, too, if you've never been to the Mirror website and gone through all the different, what do you, what do you call canteens or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, all the different ones. I mean, they have stuff for wine. <laughs> what did you for, call it the other day? It wasn't a tumbler. You call it some of those. <laughs> a rambler or something. Like that. <laughs> I mean, they have all that stuff, though. I they, don't know why. they have a tumbler. They have tumblers. Yeah, they yeah. have, I mean, they have the mugs. They have the, the traditional coffee. They have the super size one. They have this, which is the Tesla. I don't know what you call. <laughs> what, do you, what do you call these, Doug? What's the, what's the name of like the big water bottle like this? Cup. <clears throat> yeah. No, it's got like a Name. Yeah, it has a name. Let me look it up. They also, so I don't have it on this one. Katrina has it on hers. They make these interchangeable lids where you can flip it open and it has like a straw built oh, into okay. it, mm -hmm. yeah, which is pretty cool. She likes that one. Um, but anyways, I'm bringing back for us, I'm going to bring back the the 16 ounce coffee one with the lid, which oh, yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. was my favorite. And we, we did. You guys the, used to use those all the time. All, all the, the time, time I yeah. use it. It's Because I like the, the, the coffee mug, which uh, that one's cool, but it's less coffee. Yeah. So I think it's only like it's an, a little small. Yeah, I think it's only eight, eight to twelve but, but ounces. But it fits in my in my uh, you know cup holder in my truck. So I was like, that's pretty much what I'm doing these days. I'm making all my coffee before I well, get on the road. And that's why I told Chokey I want the because it's sixteen ounces and it fits in the cup holder mm -hmm. really good. Because the other one that's even bigger doesn't fit in there as good. I want that's some a that, factor. Yeah, yeah, selfishly I want the yeah, one I that know. fits in the in my truck and it's also it's t it's taller, so it's more than like the little ten ounce or twelve ounce or whatever. They call that a wide mouth vacuum sealed bottle mm, damn it's a mouthful like right. that yeah but i'm trying to i'm trying to drink water more i've uh i found myself doing a lot of the the coffee caffeine and um if i don't if i'm not mindful of it if i'm not carrying this thing around i i under drink water it's like the whole tracking calories thing it's you know what makes me drink totally. a lot of water mm. the element i put that in my water and i drink the fuck out of it because <laughs> it tastes so good yeah so yeah. i just drink hella water all the time yeah. uh, with it but if i don't i forget especially when we're podcasting a lot yeah. no I'll, I'll end up and i'll get i'll get home after work uh, like oh man i drink i feel the different one I feel cup like of fatigued water or something you know like i'm like disoriented almost totally. when i'm not you, drinking water you were actually the first trainer of mine that i actually think i heard you say this is a long time it was funny you brought that up um that I heard you say that to a client that was talking about being tired and fatigued. And like the first piece of advice you said is, you know, how much water are you drinking? Start drinking water. And I was like, energy, why is he going that way? Water first. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting because no, I, it's a big deal. I know. I, and I know that I'm pretty bad about that. And it was like one of these things that, wow, it's not the first place I go when I think, oh, I'm getting kind of fatigued or sl mm -hmm. sluggish in the day. I don't think water first. I think, oh, how did I sleep last night? Or what did I eat? Yeah. And sometimes it's that easy of a fix that if you are really under consuming water, you will feel side effects like that, like fatigue, especially headaches. Yeah. People who get who often get headaches. That's why. That's why. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was something that I recognized because I did suffer from headaches a lot. Hey, real quick, before we get to the questions, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Go check out what we're giving away for free. You won't believe your mind. Lots of free stuff at mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Sarah Haney. 
I love following strong female role models like Lori Christine King, who has worked to get her caloric maintenance up to around 2,500 calories while maintaining a lean physique. Is this a realistic number that most active females should be able to consume, or are people like her an anomaly? I, I picked this question. First of all, shout out to LCK. We love her. Oh, she's, she's amazing. The she best. Is. She's yeah. one of the best ones she out there. She is. She's phenomenal. She's and She puts out incredible content. Um, and I, I picked this because, well, one, it was liked by a lot of people. So there was a lot of people that had this exact same question. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of a number that I, it was a generic number. It's very generic because there's definitely an individual variance for sure. But that was most clients I could get, most female clients, regardless of their size, and so that I could get up above to, to about 2,500 or above. And that would be a good, and, and what I have found for most of my female clients, this is a good amount of food, right? Now, some people might say that 1,800 or 2,000 is plenty of food for them. Well, this is, the, of course, this is where the variance is, right? Or some people have crazy appetites and they want 3,000 calories. So that's where, here's where the individual variance comes in. But I always thought that 2,500 was a, a pretty good place for me to get most of my clients because it gave me plenty of room to- Yeah, because then you go down to 2,000 to cut. That's right. right. That's where mm -hmm. typically you'll go. That's right. You know, it's a hard question to answer because it's so different uh, from person yeah. to person. I think it is a, a decent target, but like, here's the deal. Um, 2,500 calories sounds good. It might be too much in the sense that you might be like, I don't want to eat this much food. Yeah. Um, also, it might not make you feel good. It's so different from person to person, but I will say this, if you're healthy, you're sleeping good, you have good hormonal health, and you're doing proper strength or resistance training where you're building muscle, you will burn way more calories than if those things are not there. You will have a metabolism that burns more calories. Well, and this is what makes or would make uh, Lori look kind of like an anomaly because she's strong. And she build and she yeah. strength trains. And, and you she know what she, she builds muscle. And you know she came from a place yeah. where her metabolism was wrecked. Right, it was really slow. That's right. So you can do the same thing too. But if you're if you're comparing yourself where you're currently at, and you don't strength train and build muscle like she's built muscle, um, then yeah, it's going to be very hard for you to compare your fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred calories to her twenty five hundred. And it may take you a while to get there to put on the muscle mass that she has over the last That year. part's mm -hmm. important, by the way, is that you got to be patient sometimes. Yeah. I've worked with clients- Guarantee that, she didn't get to 2,500 overnight. No. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with clients where they did so many rounds of extreme restriction and lots and lots of cardio, and they really trained their metabolisms to get really slow. Mm -hmm. It took us a year uh, to, get the, to get them to really make an impact with their metabolic rate. So- you're going to be patient. Now, why would you want to be patient? Well, what a good place to be, right? At the end of, of doing all this, now you're in this position where you're eating more than you did before and you're leaner. Right. And that's much more sustainable, right? I mean, that's the point really is, is to, to, to achieve that, to even have that as a goal is a great mindset to be in. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really why we're trying to promote that more that you can you can achieve that. You can achieve a, a level where you're, you feel like you're eating quite a substantial amount, but you're still in a really lean place. Next question is from Be Sore, Not Sorry. I hear you guys talk about the elimination diet frequently. I've got psoriasis and my gut is easily bothered, but I don't know what is bothering it. Where would you suggest starting? What do you recommend to keep in the diet when first starting out? Okay, so a couple things. If you find that your gut is very, very sensitive, I would suggest, first off, going to see someone um, and maybe getting tested for... SIBO. SIBO is actually present in a majority of people who have irritable bowel type issues. So that's number one. Now, why is that important? It can be cured. It can be cured with antibiotics or it can be cured with herbal antimicrobials. So besides that, you want to take foods out of your diet that are common intolerances. The most common offenders are dairy, gluten, added sugar, you could throw in uh, egg whites to that. You could throw in nuts. Uh, you could throw in legumes in that if you want to go really crazy. But dairy and gluten, I would say, are the two most common ones that uh, that you can remove. But here's the thing. There's a big individual variance here. Yeah. I've worked with clients. I had, I had one lady who had mild psoriasis. We couldn't figure out what it was. We, and it turned out to be bananas. 
Well, look what just happened to me with mm. meat. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I just did like an elimination diet all the way down to just meat. And I I found that if I was not eating grass-fed meat, that I was having, my psoriasis was flaring up, mm -hmm. which blew my mind because I'm like, I'm eating nothing else. And, right. I, and I've never had, and I've never actually felt an issue from meat. I didn't think I did, but now it started to make me connect the dots. Like, so one of the biggest flare-ups I get with my psoriasis besides sugar, sugar is number one for me. Uh, and the next one would be when I'd eat like, a five guys burger. Now I thought it was the gluten that was in there and maybe the dairy, but what I actually think it is, it's the combination of the the, the red meat that's not grass fed, the dairy and the gluten. It's mm -hmm. like the perfect storm for me mm -hmm. because all of them affect me. And so, and, and something like that hits me harder than anything else that I've ever, I've ever yeah, noticed. That's an interesting, the combos, which I've noticed as well. Like uh, certain foods as they are by themselves, don't react uh, or give me that same reaction as they do when in combination, uh, which is something too, that you kind of tease out. And th this is why I find this strategy so valuable though, is just, and, and it's tough because really to, to perform it effectively, you have to be super strict and rigid uh you know in terms of like peeling back all the way down to something yep. i don't i just don't feel like a lot of people have the discipline really to pull us off you also have to be very open-minded because what happens a lot of times it be your favorite food that's right it's yeah, almost dude. always your favorite food that's like i mean he's still here yeah so <laughs> there, when when you do this you don't want to believe it's something you really enjoy or eat a lot because it's that's hard for i people. eat that all the time though how could it possibly that, be that i know and, and that's the other thing too we, your body is very resilient and it will, it will adapt. Like if I like, so, uh, and this is another one that's really tough for me. I'm, I'm noticing that, uh, whey affects me worse more than what I thought it would. Now in the context of it being by itself, the only thing they, it's not enough. But if I start to do it multiple times a day or frequently in the week, it starts to compound and then it'll start to cause issues. That's really tough for me to break free from that mm -hmm. because it's something, it's a food that I've been attached to for so long. And so, you got to be open-minded to be okay with it. The same thing with the the meat. I love meat, and so I was like, "There's no way it's the." And when I thought of the burger, I'm like, "It's probably the bread. It's probably the cheese. Mm -hmm, it can't be mm -hmm, the meat." You know right. what I'm saying? There's no way it's the meat, like because I don't want to believe it's the meat. So, but then I was on a completely all meat diet, and I only had those issues when I was eating outside of grass-fed beef. So, you can start. I like like a a paleo esque type of diet. I think is a kind of a, a good a good place to start, or like or a carnivore if you're willing to go that strict of a place mm -hmm. to start and then you slowly build. By on the that. way, if you eliminate something, you have to completely eliminate it completely yeah. and you got to give yourself at least 30 days mm -hmm. yeah. and then introduce one thing at a time. So if you cut out dairy and gluten for 30 days and then you introduce gluten, leave just gluten for a week. Don't introduce two things or three things because then and you don't, can't figure out that Don't one introduce off. it in a massive amount either. Yeah. <laughs> like, I made that mistake Yeah, because I'm like so excited I'm going to eat this and then it just <laughs> hammers you so. well what's really neat is and speaking to psoriasis because i have psoriasis too um about that because it's a it's a visual thing you can see like it's very obvious when i have a psoriasis flare-up i mean it, if i'm really dialed on the diet especially when i'm eating low calorie mm -hmm. it completely suppresses it it goes down the minute i eat in a surplus and i hit some of these offenders it flares right up and if i've been doing a really good job of running like an elimination diet or avoiding the things that i know that i have an issue with the minute I take it in, I mean, it's 30, 30 minutes to an hour after eating that food and I'm like itching right away yeah. and picking at it. Like, so you'll know, so you'll yeah. know, but you got to be aware. You'll you be, be a lot more that. sensitive too coming back. That's what in. I mean. Yeah. You're, you're more sensitive yeah, when more. you've, when you've eliminated it for a while and then reintroduce it. If you've got all these foods in your diet, it's hard because the body is resilient. It will adapt. It mm -hmm. will start to, it won't flare up as bad, even though you're getting a flare up from it. When you pull it all out and then you reintroduce it, you'll see it. You'll get a, a different reaction. Next question is from Marissa Lift Repeat. What is going to be the next big worthwhile shift in fitness? Oh, good question. You know what? It's funny. Since I've been doing all these interviews for the book, mm -hmm. I've been interviewed now by several doctors. In fact, I was just yesterday, I was interviewed by uh, the author of Wheat Belly. Are you guys familiar with that book, Wheat Belly? It was like a bestseller. Right? I didn't read it, but I'm yeah. familiar with it. Right. So, and he has a group where people pay to listen to speakers. So in this group, I don't know how many hundreds of people were in there, and I'm talking about resistance training. He's been communicating this exact message for, and he was a cardiologist. He's been communicating the exact same message now for the past couple of years. 
and him and I got talking and he says, you know, Sal, he goes, uh, the research around strength training or resistance training just didn't exist a couple decades ago. I've talked about this before on the show. He said more recently, research is coming out where they're studying resistance training and they're looking at it for, for longevity purposes. How does it affect brain health? How does it affect heart health? How does it affect vis visceral body fat and diabetes? And he goes, the research coming out is crazy. I think the next big thing, and this is what I bet on when I wrote that book, is going to be strength training. Now, not in the fitness space. We've all known this for a long time. But I think the medical community now is starting to come mm. to it and start to push it. I think over the next 10 years, we're going to see- In terms of prescribing it? Yeah. I think over the next 10 years, we're going to see strength training be a thing that everybody talks about, the average person. So that's what I would predict is the yeah, next that'd be great. kind of big thing. Yeah. It's a little more general than the way I was thinking. I was thinking a little more specific. I think that glucose monitors are going to become way more popular. I think you're going to see, and I think it's going to help a lot of people that have like diabetes and stuff. And it's going to, uh, it's going to unlock a lot of things nutritionally for people that are trying to figure it out. I mean, we were just off air having a, a, a conversation um, with Melissa and she was um, from whole 30 and she was, she's using it right now. And we were talking about how she, get, she could eat uh, oatmeal. She was telling me like she could eat a whole big old bowl of oatmeal, no spike whatsoever from it. But then she has a little bit of sweet potato mm -hmm. and she gets a massive spike from it. So I think there's such an individual variance in how people react to certain foods. Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, we are very yeah. clueless to that. And I think that is going to unlock a lot of potential nutrition. I can get behind that. I, I find it so valuable to get more accurate information that, that pertains to the individual. And I think, you know, the more we can kind of, uh, you know, hone in on that uh, nutritionally will uh, really provide people with a lot of good, valuable, you know, things that they can then apply to their their planning and their organizing of their shopping list and everything. Yeah, I would like for that to be a, a big thing. I, you know, I think it's extremely valuable. I'm, I'm very fascinated. The challenge is going to be, you know, are people going to do anything with this information? That's always going to be the challenge. Right? Well, that's always with tech. Right? Anything, yeah, right? That's, I mean, because it'll start out as they're trying to make it cool, and then you know, later on, people will be like, okay, what's the value here? I mean, it's the it's the same debate that we made with the whole mirror and tonal thing, right? Yep. Because I mean, that thing could be extremely valuable too. Totally. But, but will people use it, and will they use it correctly, and will they be consistent with it, or will it be just that much harder because it's in their house and it's easier to say no to it and not do it? So. You know, a lot of these tools. So I don't know. I think the the glucose monitor, because it's something that they you literally stick it on you and don't have to think about mm -hmm. it. And then all you'd have to do is basically check your app to get mm -hmm. the feedback on what, what you ate. To me, uh, that's going to help a lot of people out. And I, I'm interested well, to see where that goes. I think, too, in... in I think that this was starting to become a trend before the pandemic and everything else, like where we, we saw like unique, like uh, little gyms that, that were popping up that were just recovery based. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was getting excited about that, but then, you know, all this hit. And so it was like, you know, retail took a massive, uh, you know, lump to the face, but uh, I could still see, you know, some traction there in terms of like, there's just a, a big community of people that are over training, don't realize it yet. You know, once they kind of step into something like that, that introduces them to what a full recovery focus would provide them. I think it would be interesting and, and valuable. Next question is from Adam Pullman fit. How have you faced paralysis by analysis in your own lives? And how do you recommend people combat it in a world of information overload. I'm trying to think of the last, if this ever really, I, you know, I don't tend to be a person that gets paralyzed we, by analysis. We, we, I tend yeah, to just we, run. We, we already shoot aim. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're the opposite. Yeah, as I say, we kind of have the opposite problem. We tend to just do shit. And, yeah. and, and I think that- You know what? I'll tell you where. Okay. Uh, right now, um, uh, purchasing a home here in the Bay Area. So I can definitely go back and forth. Part mm -hmm. of me is like, should I get one? And the other part of me is like, it's too expensive around here. It's crazy. Yeah, that's come down. That's fair. And You've been saying that for the last two years. And if you would have bought two years ago, you would have made like $300,000. Exactly. <laughs> and then there's that, right? And then there's that. Oh my gosh, I would have done, you know, so yeah, yeah. maybe something like that I can think of. Um, how do I combat it? I mean, you just got to fucking make a choice and be okay with the fact that you might have made well, the wrong choice. So the, yeah. the answer to how, like, uh, we, this is not, I don't, I actually think I'm pretty good at this, right? I think all of us are. And one of the things that when we've talked about this, uh, you, you, and I just had this conversation with my nephew who I'm mentoring right now is because he struggles with this is you have to make peace with the worst outcome. 
Mm -hmm. So you have to think of this scenario. It's responsible for you to think about. Like, it's, let's use your house example. Sure. What is the absolute worst thing yeah. that could happen? The housing mar market tanks. Yeah, the housing market tanks. Okay. Well, in that situation, what would you do? And would would it really be that detrimental to you? Would you be able to still live in it or potentially rent it out and just hold on to it for 10 more years? And Or would you lose your ass? Or would you be so leveraged that you would be screwed like in your situation? So think of the worst scenario that could happen with your decision and make peace with it. And if you can't make peace with it, then maybe you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But that's, I mean, that's how I look at all the decisions that we're about to make. I go like, okay, I want to do this in the business or I want to do this in my life. And I'm like, well, I don't think right. Away. I'm not the type of person who goes, oh, it's going to work out so good. Like nothing in my life ever works out perfect. Right. Like, so I'm so used to things crashing, burning, failing that I go like, okay, I'm going to put all this energy over here. I'm going to make this decision. This could go wrong. This could go wrong. This could happen. It could be this bad. And I think about all of them. And then I go like, okay, now what would I do if all those things happen? And if I can see my way out of it, and I would be okay and I could survive it or I could or I could make peace with that that bad of a situation that I'm doing it. Yeah, I think I'm jumping. A, I think that's good advice because if you're okay wraps, with the man. worst, then you'll just take a you'll yeah. take a step. Because like, what happens if you're not okay with the worst, you take no step. By the way, no choice is a choice. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people are like, I'm too afraid to choose. Not choosing is choosing, right? You're choosing to not choose. That's and so right. you've done neither one. And they one. say that's the worst choice. Like Oftentimes you're you're, you're better off making a bad choice because a bad choice you can at least learn from that. And there's right. a lesson in there where if you don't make a choice, you'll always wonder what if I did that or didn't do that. I think it's always risk reward and in you know, role playing that and, and seeing it all the way through, like you're kind of describing in terms of like, you know, what's the worst case scenario? What could happen? And uh I think that's really how I've been able to deal with with most of it. And it's like, if I'm going to be fine, then, and I'm going to be able to work my way out of it, even if it's the worst case scenario, then like, what am I waiting for? Like, I'm just getting in my own way. Uh, but it takes reps. It's going to take smaller. I just think that if you can, you could find things that maybe don't sound as, uh, you know, uh, frightening for you and, and step in and just go, then do the next thing, step in and go and just, just build off of that. Uh, some people that maybe that would help, uh, to as strategy wise. Well, this is why I've always liked in business to come up with ideas that, cause I've done a lot of things that didn't pan out. Um, but I've always done things that I'm like, okay, well, here's my main core job that I love to do or that makes most of my money. Mm -hmm. um, but I have this idea. I never, I've never done anything that is so polar opposite of what I'm doing that if I left that and committed to that, I would be absolutely screwed You'd if it fractured. failed. Yeah, I've always tried to do things like, okay, I, I, have, I have this business idea and this business could actually kind of help this business potentially grow. And then if it fails, I'm still in this space and so I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you do your risk reward type of attitude. I might, I, I tend to make decisions that I maybe not have as high of a reward because it's not that high of a risk, but that's because I play this game in my head of like, okay, it's not gonna work out, it's gonna you fail. Have a scaffolding. Here, yeah, and then you could branch out. Yeah, I, I definitely I, I apply that same approach for sure. Excellent. Look, if you like our information, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free stuff. We have so many free guides that offer lots of value information with training, nutrition, even personal training. Go to mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Daily weigh-ins can be really good. They can kind of keep you on track. You got to remember who we're talking to right mm -hmm. now. I don't think that you know weighing every single day for the person who has body image issues and freaked out about the scale going up or down, this is for the person who is struggling to build muscle and being able to